All right, welcome back everyone. Hopefully you remember what we did last time. Make sure you review that video as many times as you need. Uh, so just a quick reminder, we were talking about the steps, right? We were talking about the qualities of the step. So we're stepping from the bowl to the heel for merengue. We talked about the different turns that we can do. So we did a turn to the right. We did a turn to the left. We did a fast, low, a, a fast turn and a slow turn. We did the side step. We did the crossing step. Right? We did the dragging step that takes it to one side, a half a turn going to the other side. Uh, we did the basic in place. We went forward, we went backwards, and one of our favorites, la cadera, right? When we talked about going around with the hips, um, we did also that one slow and fast. So make sure you check out that video so you can review all of the steps. Today, we're gonna start by talking a little bit about the history of merengue, how it came to be one of the most popular genres in the world and then we'll start to add a little bit more steps to our choreo. So for instance, when we're dancing merengue, you'll notice that I'm taking two steps, right? But if you notice really closely, if you look really close to the details, one of my legs has an accent that the other one doesn't. See if you can pick it up. So I'll do it slower. So if you notice, every time I step with my left, there seems to be a little bit of an accent, like my body goes down a little bit. So if I exaggerate it, it looks like this. So when you dance, you'll notice there's gonna be that one leg that usually carries an accent. Um, it could be the right or the left, it doesn't really matter, but it's something really important to pay attention to because a lot of that has to do with merengue's origin. So when merengue was first introduced to the Caribbean, um, Dominican Republic, we're talking about 1840s, like mid 1840s, a long, long time ago. Uh, we like to call it um, uh, kind of like a grandparent dance. And the reason why we call it a grand, oh, there we go. The reason why we call it a grandparent dance is because it's one of the oldest Afro-Caribbean Latin dances in the Caribbean. So we're talking about older than salsa, older than bachata, older than, you know, compa in, in Haiti. You, you have a lot of dance styles and music styles that were inspired by merengue. And being that it's such an old dance and old music, you have to understand what was happening in the Caribbean around this time. So for those of you who are already familiar, merengue comes from what country? Dominican Republic, right? So in La República Dominicana and Dominican Republic, you have a clash, kind of like a cultural clash of three particular cultures. And each one of these cultures is going to bring something to merengue. So for instance, the most important culture was the culture that was already there in the Caribbean before contact with, the, with Europe, right? And that's going to be our Arawak culture. And the Arawak group that was in the Caribbean at that time was Los Tainos. Los Tainos are going to be the indigenous uh, people of the Caribbean. Yes, yeah, specifically in the Dominican Republic, Cuba, Haiti, and Puerto Rico, and Jamaica as well. So now, that's the people who were already there. And then you have first contact with Europe, which is going to bring the European side of our culture, right? Um, in Dominican Republic, it's going to be specifically Spain. And then, of course, if you learn about history in the transatlantic slave trade, um, the slave triangle, that's going to bring a lot of people from Western Africa, specifically Congo, Nigeria, Angola, and all of them are going to come into the Caribbean. So you have all these enslaved people coming from Africa, European contact, and Taino people that are already there. So when you mix all of that in, you can imagine there's going to be a huge culture shock, right? So when we talk about merengue, merengue is one of those kind of like a seed that was planted by all of these different things, right? So you have from Africa, tamboras. And next week, we're going to talk a little bit about the instruments. Tambora coming from Africa. Uh, you have the accordion and the string instruments like the guitar coming from Europe. And... Do you know what instruments in merengue come from the actual Caribbean that were actually born and raised there? And that is your guira, your scraping instrument. So all of your scraping instruments, the guira, the guiro, the guajej, el guayo, those are all going to be instruments that are based on scraping. So you usually have a stick. Maybe some of you have something like this at home where you're going right? And then in Cuba, you have a guiro, which is kind of like the, the big brother, right? The so they have a different sound, but it's the same concept. So there you go. You have your uh, guitars and your accordion coming from uh, Europe. You have your tamboras coming from Africa. And you have the native instrument, which is going to be our guira. 
Now, this means that the dance itself, it's also going to have influences from a lot of these places, right? So when we're stepping in, 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 in merengue, we're doing one, two, one, two. You notice there's a little bounce, right? This little bounce here is a very African and Caribbean thing, right? In Europe, uh, a lot of the contradanzas and uh, country dances in Europe are not going to have that kind of bounce, which is why sometimes the dancing looks very different. Um, one way to describe it is kind of like dancing formal, right? Nice and formal versus dancing street, down to the ground. So one is going to be more lifted and one of them is going to be more grounded. So for merengue, you have to make sure that you keep that groundedness because that's how you know when someone's like, oh, wow, mira, esa muchacha baila merengue, ese muchacho baila merengue. And what they're talking about is that accent, those cadences of the downbeats, right? Because in Europe, if you see merengue, a lot of the times it's going to look a little bit more upscale, like a ballroom dance, baile de salón, right? Which you can have merengue de salón, but it's a very different merengue than merengue de la calle or mambo. Yeah, so that's a little bit of the history of merengue. So what I want to do today is start to teach you a couple of the different steps and what influences they're going to be bringing into merengue. So for instance, when I dance, we're just going to do this, right? In Cuba and Dominican Republic, we have a very specific hip movement that is called the side-to-side -side hip, right? Side-to-side -side hip, where your hips go side-to-side -side as you're taking your steps. But another hip movement is the rounded hip right, the figure eight, which this one is gonna go kinda like corner around, corner around. So if you're there, try it with me and just practice going, twisting to the corner, bringing it around, it's back here, now you're gonna send it to the front corner, bringing it around, now it's back here, you send it to the front corner. And if you want, just exaggerate this a little bit. Yeah, it's kinda like a, a weirdly shaped hula hoop. So what you wanna do here is start to step and keep that movement going, and that is the beginning of your figure eight. Yeah, and then just take it around. Let's do it a couple of times. So it's basically a figure eight. Now, not everyone's gonna look the same doing the figure eight, so you have to focus on, again, just like last week, how it feels for you. So when you're doing it, you're like, oh, it doesn't feel that good. Maybe I need to bring it out more. Like, oh, wait, it feels too exaggerated. Let me tone it down a little bit. So that's gonna be up to you. Yeah, so now you have two different hips. You have side hips, dun, 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 right, going to the side. And the step sends the hip to the opposite way. So for instance, if I step to my left, notice that my hip is on my right. And when I step to my right, notice that my hip is on my left. So that's how you get that motion of going from one side to the other. So let's practice those two with a beat, like this. One, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. I'm gonna start turning around so you can see it. Two, one, two. Here's what it looks like from the side. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. Here's the back. One, two, side to side. One, two. Here's the other side. One, two, one, two, one, two. Here's the front again. One, two, one, two, one, two, and stop right there. So we're gonna call that our merengue hips, right? The side to side hips. Now we're gonna add a little bit of that rounded hip, which is gonna come in in certain parts of the song, like when you get really excited. So ready? Same thing, we're gonna start with my left, like this. My hip is gonna go right, and then I start twisting it in. Ready? Five, six, figure eight, and one, two, one, two, one, two. Here's the side view, one, two, one, two, one, two. Here's the back and one, two. See if you can spot the figure eight. One, two. Here's the other side and one, two. One, two, one, two. And here's the front again. One, two, one, two. And stop right there. So here's a little fun fact. When you're dancing merengue, usually, you know, you're in a party some, or one of your parents or your uncles or your aunts, they're like, ven, baila con tu primo, ven, baila con tu primo. And you're like, oh, I don't know what to do. If you start just doing the steps, your hips automatically are gonna start moving side to side. So you don't have to really learn to move the hips, you just have to learn how to let your body go as you're taking the steps. But when you're starting to put in the figure eight, it's gonna give you a different feeling and a different feel. And people are gonna look at you and like, wow, do that again, what is that? So don't be afraid of moving your hips in merengue. It's actually a very, very big part of the, the dance, yeah? So those are your two hips, side hips, 
and figure eight. Now let's talk about the arms. So when you're dancing merengue, you have to focus on not having your arms low. Remember we talked about above your waist and in front of your belly. So you can do something like this. You can bring them out more. You can bring them out. You can bring them up or you can put them low. So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna give you a couple of ideas of what you can do and I'm gonna progress from one to the other. So let's start with our basic step. Five, six, basic, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right now my arms are kinda like holding two sticks, like this, facing down, yeah? Now let's bring the arms low. Notice when my arms go low, I tend to move my body a little bit differently, my shoulders start to activate more. And now bring the elbows out. Yeah, now send the hands out. Yay. Now put them up. Weepa. So you notice the degree of the dance, the energy of the dance, the feeling of the dance changes regardless, uh, depending on where I put my arms. So as you're dancing, don't be afraid to explore the different arms. Here's some other ones. Like for instance, let's say that you're dancing with someone and you're holding someone and then you let each other go and like, oh my God, what do we do now? So the idea is when you let go, this is where you can add a little bit more freedom. So for instance, I'm dancing and then I let go and I'm like, hey, a little clap right there, bring the arms up, bring them down, play an instrument, a guira, right? Bongos, hold the guitar, thinking, 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 or bring the arms out, bring them in front of your chest. You can use them to go around, right? You can send one up, one down, like if you're holding a partner or a guitar or elbows up, or down low, right? Sometimes when you bring your arms down low, your knees start to buckle from one side to the other. That's a whole other kind of movement. So now when you're dancing, don't be afraid to throw all of those movements in and then just mix them all up, yeah? I have one more. So we talked about your hips. We talked about the arms. There's one more part of the body that's super important when it comes to merengue, and that is your legs. So what I'm gonna do now is give you a couple of the ideas that we talked about before. So we had those crossing legs, remember that? We had the crossing legs, we had the one going out. I like to call this one el cojo, because it kind of looks like you have a limp, like a bad leg, like, ah, me duele el pie. Oh, so you have to dance with one foot, right? And that particular step, we're gonna talk about a little other historical fact, and that is uh, to talk about the origin of the dance. So a lot of times when people talk about merengue, and they ask you, so how did people start dancing merengue? Where did the steps come from? So I'm gonna give you two very popular theories for how merengue started as a dance. The first theory is that um, in 1880, uh, 1844, right before La Independencia, the independence, one of the battles uh, that was fought in the Dominican Republic uh, had a general. And this general, his name was Tomas. And he was the guy that carried the flag who usually when you carry the flag you're either victorious if the flag is up or if the nation falls the flag goes down so this man had the flag and he was so scared of what was happening that he ran away right so the name of the first merengue song that was out there was called Tomás huyó con la bandera Tomás huyó con la bandera Tomás huyó de Talanquera which is a town so this man Tomás apparently had a gun, uh, a shot, uh, a leg that was kind of like hurt, right? And one of his legs was in bad shape. So when he came back to the town, he was kind of like a war hero and he had to walk with a limp because he had a bad leg. So in order to honor him, everybody in the town decided, you know what, let's all move like him so that he doesn't feel bad. So if he was dancing like this or moving like this, people started dancing like this, right? That one leg behind, kind of like dragging it a little bit. And that became one of the popular theories of how merengue started. So even to this day, we still don't know which of the two theories is the, the right one, right? Because it's not a lot of evidence for both. That's the first one. So people dance merengue like this because the guy Tomas had a wounded leg and he had to walk with a limp like this. So when merengue started as a dance, it started with that little limp. The second one, has to do with our days in slavery, right? So when we had the enslaved people from Africa working in the Caribbean, um, a lot of the times that you bring slaves from any country to any other place, uh, you have 
uh, chains, right? So the slaves are chained from the foot, the ankle, to the other slaves, enslaved people. So when they're walking, a lot of times they have to carry the weight of the people behind them. So that creates a lot of mom- uh, a lot of uh, dragging energy. So you have to drag people with you, right? Because it's not just like walking like this. Just imagine having shackles or something holding your foot down and trying to walk with that. You can almost see like, wait a minute, this is not an easy way to dance. But just imagine if you had to dance like that, right? Which is where the second theory comes from that it had to do with the way that the slaves were chained together. So if you're watching at home, I want you to think, like think back in your head, okay, which one of those two makes the most sense to me? Maybe do some research, look it up. And one day I just want you to like, say to someone like, hey, did you know that there's two very popular theories for how the steps in Medinga came to be? And who knows, maybe we can get to the bottom of it. So remember, keep those in mind. Now let's talk about what to do with our legs. So when you're dancing Merengue, my knees are gonna not point forward. So you see this is pointing forward and it's parallel. And you don't want to dance Merengue like this for several reasons. One, because it's gonna look a lot more like Elvis, right? Like, you ain't nothing but her. So we don't wanna look like Elvis when we're dancing Merengue. In order to look a little bit more authentic or natural, we point our knees slightly outwards towards the corner. And there's several reasons for that. So give it a try, see how that feels for your body. And I'll explain why this happens. Imagine that you're dancing in front of someone and your knees are going forward. What's gonna happen if both of our knees are going forward? Yeah, they're gonna clash, they're gonna hit each other. And you're like, ah, ay, ooh, ooh. and there's gonna be a lot of contact. So when you turn your knees outwards and the other person turns their knees outwards, then we're fitting in kind of like a puzzle piece with our knees going in on one side and then in on the other side, yeah? So when you're dancing with someone, it's a little bit more comfortable. So try to get used to your knees going corner to corner, but not too much, not like this. This will be too much. So I bring it in kind of like this much, yeah? Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, so that's one thing that we do with our knees. The second thing, and I'm gonna turn this way so you can see it, is to bend. Kung, 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 kung. Bending the knees is the other important thing. And then the last thing for our leg is what's happening between my foot and the ground. So if this is the ground, again, we did this last time, my foot is going from the ball to the heel or flat depending on the kind of merengue you're dancing. If you're dancing to a merengue that's typical, perico ripiao, something faster with accordions and saxophones, most likely it's gonna be heavier, flat foot. But if you're dancing something more moderno, urbano, merengue de orquesta, merengue popular, it's gonna be slightly more lifted, meaning a little bit with the ball to the heel, yeah? But there's nothing wrong with doing either of those in any merengue. Now, with that being said, we're going to dance to our first song. Now, this song is very special because it's not only one of my favorite songs, but it's a song that really teaches you about history in the Caribbean. So this song is called Guayando, and if you listen to it, it's going to tell a little bit of the story of European contact with the Taino people in the Dominican Republic. So let's go with Guayando. Guayando. Ooh, there it is. And now just copy my steps. Left, right, left, right. Gozadera total. Now, let's practice all the steps that we have from the week before. Ready? Right turn, slow. So that's the one that goes corner side, corner side, yeah? Right turn, slow. Side, corner, side, corner, side, corner, side. Left turn, slow. Side, corner, side, corner, side, corner, side, corner. Now, let's do the fast turn to the left. Ready? Go. Push and turn. Go. Push and turn. Now, let's try it to the right. Ready? Go. Push, turn. Ready? Go. Push, turn. Feel that music. Feel that bass. Goom, 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 goom. Now, let's practice the drag step. Ready? Hey. Hey, dragging the right foot. Yeah, turn it around halfway. Stay right here. And bring it back. Now let's try the swing step. Here we go. Remember the swing step? Side step, 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 basic. Next up, we're gonna get into that crossing step that we did. 
cross, cross, open, open, starting with the right. Here we go. And cross, cross, open, open, cross, cross, open, open. You can use your arms too. It's like you're running. Cross, cross, open, open, cross, cross, open, open, cross, cross, open, open, hold. Now let's take it to the ground. Let's get even more grounded with our tumbao. Tumbao on the left, like this. Now on the right, ahora, ahora. All right, when this next part of the song comes on, it's gonna get exciting. So we're gonna do our hip circle. Ready? Starting to the left. Go. Basic. Ooh, that one with the music. We're gonna keep that step. Now let's try it to the right side, starting with the left leg. Ready? Go. All right, when you're eating habichuela, you can't move too much, right? So it's hot. You gotta eat right. Mmm. Una habichuela con dulce, Dios mío. Ahí. Hey, hey, so that's gonna be your habichuela. So all of these ingredients is how we're making our meal to taste really good. Because let's face it, if the food doesn't taste good, we're not gonna wanna eat it. So if the merengue doesn't taste good, I'm not gonna wanna dance it. So for the next song, we're gonna go with, uh, I believe is Cosas de Él. Miriam Cruz, and this song has a lot of flavors. So when you dance this with me, you gotta give me all the flavors. Get all the ingredients you have in your kitchen and just put them all in there, even if it's too much flavor. I'd rather too much flavor than not enough, okay? Here we go. Ay, oye, oye ese piano. Hey, arroz. Habichuela. Arroz. Eso que les importa. Pollo. Eso que les lastima. Eso Aguacate. Mía, si soy su amante. And freeze. Si soy We're gonna do it again. Amiga. Ready? Right left. Right left. Right left. Right left. Arroz. Right. Very important. The rice. Habichuela. Pace. One more time for Abichuela. And. Basic. All right, get ready for the pollo. Pollo. Go. Basic. Right, left, right, left. Aguacate. And now let's go back to the rest of the things we learned. Arms. Right in front of you. Up. Side or down low, hey, 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 hey. or up top. Right? It's kind of like when you're in a party, you're like, What do I do with my arms? Just throw them up. Basic. All right, now let's mix up all the ingredients. Ready? Let's see if you remember all of them. I'm gonna say it first, you do it, and then I'll do it with you. Ready? And aguacate. Basic, arroz. And habichuela. Think about it. We have one more, we have one more ingredient, ready? Basic. Show me el pollo, como baila el pollo? Ready, go. Basic. Now we're cooking, you see that? Now we're cooking. 
feel the sweat? Basic. Take it forward. Bring it back. Use your arms. Take it to the side. Turn, half, turn, half, turn. Take it to the other side. Basic turn. And what other steps that we've learned? Let's see. Open, open, close, close. And remember this other one? Tumbao. Hey. 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 Now I'm going to show you some arms for the pollo. We're going to call this one palm trees, like this. Hey. Ready? Palm trees. It's the same hips as, the, as going around, but with your arms up. Let's try our different hips, side hips. Figure eight. And, and, up. And take your bow. All right. Wow, that song. Now, you see, I told you we were cooking. Look at the sweat. Hopefully, those of you who are practicing at home, you're sweating just like me. If you're not sweating, something's wrong. If you're not sweating, maybe you're not putting in enough ingredients or you have to turn the heat up in the kitchen. But don't do that with your, without your parents, okay? Don't just go to the kitchen and start cooking, yeah? So remember, all of these ingredients are always available at all times. So next time you're sitting down, da -da 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 -da, you're in la fiesta de tu primo and your cousin's birthday party, and your mom is like, pero baila con tu primo, ven, baila. And you're like, ay, no, mami, yo no quiero. I know why you do that. I was in the same place. It's because I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to make a fool of myself. So I was like, oh. And then when I learned how to dance, now I don't even need to be told to dance with my cousin. Now I'm probably dancing before everybody else gets to the party. So I come in early. I'm dancing. And the DJ's not even finished setting up. Yeah? So don't be afraid to throw in all of these ingredients. They're always there as tools, ingredients, so you can always create more. Now, let's practice putting some steps together in a certain pattern. What do we call that? What do we call when we put patterns together? We call that a choreography. So in choreography, we're going to take some steps and put them in a certain sequence. So in this choreography, we're going to start with steps from last week. Here's how our choreography starts. It starts with the basic one, two, three, four. Let's start with the right foot. Five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's the first eight count and eight count of the choreography. So it's eight steps followed by eight, eight steps. So that's going to be 16. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a push turn going to the left and another one going to the left. So it's two half circles. Let me show you. One half and then again one half. So that completes the entire circle. And that's also going to take eight steps. So if I count them, it's going to go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that's two turns, four counts each. And if you are practicing your math and you know your math, that's going to be eight, right? Two times four is eight. Let's try that again. Five, six, basic first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, half turn, push, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so you're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, when you finish with that turn, you're gonna come back to a basic, remember the basic, but with a tumbao. And the tumbao is gonna go to the right like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you're going to swing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see what I did with my arms on the seven, eight? Watch it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six, eight. And why are my hands up? Because we're getting ready to do our palm tree. One, four, five, and seven, eight. So you're going to go one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. The palm tree we only do one time, and it takes an exactly eight beats. From the beginning, our choreography, five, six, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. One more, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, tumbao, eight, and one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then here we already have, this is part one of the choreo, so now we're gonna end part one with another basic. One, two, three, four, five, six, and that is part one. That's all you need to learn for today. Next week we'll learn part two, and we'll repeat part one. So let's practice one more time part one, starting with the basic. Five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, half, half, turn six, seven, eight, half, two, half, four, half, six, half, eight, tumbao, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, that is your part one. Now here's some good news. All of this is recorded for you. So you can practice part one as many times as you need, right? Like me, I practice part one so much that I'm sweating. Like look at my sweat, this is real, okay? So you wanna practice part one as many times as you can so that then when you're ready to learn part two, it's as easy as just putting some more pieces together. Now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna practice the steps one more time, but I'm not gonna count. This time I'm gonna do the steps and I'm gonna tell you what's happening with my body. And then after that, we're gonna practice it with musica. Um, I think we're gonna practice it with that first song, that guayando. Yeah, let's practice first without the music and then with the music. Part one of the choreography, five, six, seven, eight. Basic, 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 one more time. And turn, and palm tree. And basic step, two, three, four, and five, and six, and seven, eight. That is part one of your choreo. Isn't that awesome? So now with musica, we're going to do guayando. Practice everything with that same choreography. Yep. Let's go with guayando. Remember to listen to the words so you can learn some history. Here we go. Basic. Sha. 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 All right. We're going to start when the singer starts singing. Here we go. And basic to finish it off. One more time, ready? Basic. Here we go. Tumbao. Seven, eight. One, two, three. Basic. Ready? Here we go. Basic. Now, I'm gonna show you what it looks like if I was performing it to you. So this is from the front side, ready? Here. Oh, actually, listen to the words. Remember when we were talking about history? Listen to this. Right? So they're talking about Christopher Columbus, 1492. So that's a little piece of history in that song. Now let's get back, back to the choreo, ready? Here, we, basic. Go. Tumbao. Tumbao. Hands up and turn and turn and basic step. All right, here's a little sneak peek for next week. After we do the turn, 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 we got basic, 
and then we start the drag, 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 followed by the crossing step. Then we're gonna turn, walk backwards, and then we're gonna do a really cool step that I love, but I can't show you yet, because I want you to come back next week. Now, let's practice all of the steps in different order, ready? Tumbao. All right, now get ready for the palm tree. With the music. Palm tree. Oh, we also practiced different energies last week. Let's practice minimo. Remember minimo? It's kind of like you're shy a little bit. Like, I don't want to dance. Oh my God, no, everybody's watching. Oh no. And then, maximo. Like, I don't care who's watching. Ay, olvídate de eso. Yeah? Minimo. It's like minimo, it's like you want to dance, but there's nobody to dance with, so you're just kind of like, mm. maximo. All right, side hips. And rounded hips. Now give me a tumbao. Basic. Flat. Flat, 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 flat. Cruzado. Basic, turn, hand up, and take your bow. Woo! Right on time, look at that. All right, so we're gonna do one more thing before we go. Uh, let's do a little review of what we talked about in terms of the history of merengue, how it came to be what it is today, and introducing some other elements of the music because next week, we're gonna talk about the instruments and I'm gonna bring you some of the merengue instruments so you can see them and see what they sound like. So the first important thing is the first merengue, remember that we talked about that battle of Talanquera, right? And that was 1844. So that, that song became kind of like a, a little chant that then became a merengue song. And that was the one that we talked about with the guy with the flag, remember him? Tomás, Tomás huyó con la bandera. Tomás huyó de Talenquera. So that is just telling a story of something that was happening around that battle. And that eventually turned into that rhythm that we know as the 2-4 meter, which is merengue beat. Yeah. We talked about the history of the step. So we talked about two different theories for how that merengue step came to be. The first theory was that Tomás, the general that came from the battle, had an injured leg, right? And remember how he was dancing or walking? He was walking with a limp. So in order to honor him, a lot of people were like, bueno, si el hombre está caminando así, vamos a, oh, vamos a hacer un honor. Let's just, let's just not make him feel bad. Let's make him fit in. And then they started dancing merengue with that accented beat on the outside leg. So that was one of the theories. Remember the second theory? It has a lot to do with that song you were listening to. Yeah? So we're talking about now Colombo. Who was Colombo? Colomb Christopher Columbus. En el 1492 viene un tipo que dijo que descubrió. What did he discover? Quisqueya, right? But there were already people living in Quisqueya, and what do we call them? We talked about it earlier, los Taínos. So los Taínos were the first inhabitants of the Caribbean, right? Cuba, Puerto Rico, Haiti, Dominican Republic, excuse me, and Jamaica. And then we have the European contact. And after European contact, a lot of the enslaved people from, were brought from Africa, and that's how we get the marriage or the clash of the three cultures. And remember, we talked about the instruments. Which one comes from Africa? Los tambores, right? The tambores from Yoruba land, Nigeria, Congo. And what was already in the island? Da guira, el guayo, el guayej, right? And then what was coming from Europe? Remember? the accordion and your guitar. So depending on what merengue you're listening to, you're either going to get accordion, like merengue típico, right? Or you might get típico with saxophone, perico ripiao. Those are different kinds of merengues. So remember the history a little bit. You don't have to know everything, but enough to just have a conversation with your friends. Hey, oh, you're dancing merengue. Did you know? And then you can be all smart with your friends, right? So that's a little bit of the history of merengue. Next week, we're actually going to listen to the instruments and practice part two of our choreography. Now, before we leave, let's just review the choreography one more time. Ready? Five, six, five, six, basic, and one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven again. One, two, eight counts. Three, four, five, six. Now one eight count of turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Tumbao. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Why do our hands go up? Because we're gonna do our palm tree. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that concludes part one of the choreo. And as a transition, we included the basic again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thank you so much, everyone. That was our class for today. Hopefully you learned something new about merengue. Don't forget to practice. Watch the video as many times as you need. Look at those steps. Practice those steps. Learn a little bit of the history. And I want you, remember, to do some homework. Go online and find out the history of merengue, the dance, to see which of those two theories sounds the more accurate. Was it because the general came back injured from a war? Or was it because of the way that the enslaved people walked together, dragging each other uh, the chain, right? So I want you to tell me. Thank you so much, everyone, and see you all next week. Adios.